Good morning everybody. Today we are going to dive into the electrical field and we're going to talk about how you can enter that field. Income, training opportunities, you know, some pros and cons about the industry, and then finally, what is that demand what does the demand look like for future employment? So this video is going to help you decide if entering the electrical field is right for you. First we're going to talk about you know the stats, income, job outlook, and demand. So Everybody wants to know how much are you going to make in a career. Um, I, you know, just googled some numbers, and here's what I came up with, and I found these stats to be very true. Okay, so income, the lowest 10%, you're looking at about 33,000. My first year as an electrician, I remember on my W-2, I made 29,000, but that was back in 2005, so we got to adjust for inflation. Okay, the median is going to be about 56,000, which is well above, you know, your average job. I think the average income is about thirty-eight thousand. So you know you're looking at about eighteen thousand dollars more than the average income. Okay, um, your upper ten percent is going to be ninety-eight thousand. Now um, that is going to be your higher end. You know they might be pulling a lot of overtime, or they might live in you know California or New York where wages are higher, and you have to pay more taxes. So, um, but this just provides a good overall. Um, picture of what income is going to look like for you. Um, you know, this is going to be a five-year journeyman electrician. Okay, this is going to be your apprentice, um, and you know, this might be somebody pulling on over time. Uh, your job outlook: the growth is going to be 14%, which is incredibly high. Um, you know, the reason why that outlook so high is uh, a robot's not going to be able to take your job as an electrician. An electrician has to be able to think on his feet. Um, it, he has to be able to read plans and then build based off those plans. Demand is high. Um, there is a worldwide shortage of electricians. So if you earn this skill, um, then you will be able to take it anywhere in the world and have a job. For the stats, for the income, for the job outlook and the demand, it's all way higher than you know uh, most industries. Okay, so let's look at the pros and cons. The pros, of course, let's always start with the good stuff. Um, you know, you're going to have a high income, okay, um, the demand like we just talked about, all right. you're going to have a skill that nobody can take away from you. Um, if you earn your journeyman's card, you can take that anywhere in the world and, and get a job, okay. It is a rewarding career. There's nothing more rewarding than building something, um, taking a step back at it, and, you know, it's a, it's a proud moment for, um, for anybody who knows what it's like to, to build and work with their hands. No college required in this field. Um, yes, there are college routes that you can take, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. But you know, you don't have to go in debt to to learn this skill. Okay, the cons: um, yes, there's going to be some hard work. Okay, you will be in ditches at times, running underground. You will be outside in the weather. Um, you'll be in the cold and the heat. So that can be challenging at times. Um, but if you like work in those work conditions and you don't want to be stuck in an office all day, then, um, th then that is great for you and it would, it would fit you, your personality well. Okay? Um, another con is you have a changing work location. You're not going to go to the same job um, every day. You might go to the same job for six months or a year, but then that's going to change. You know? um, so you might have a 20 minute commute one day and then you know, six, from, six months from now you might have an hour commute. So that, that is a con in my opinion. Um, also some people, you know, they hit the road and they work out of town. So, you know, you, depending on the company you work for, you know, you may, you may be at home for three months and then you might, you know, be in the next state over for three months. So the changing work location is definitely a con in my opinion. Um, and then the last one, the economy. Um, some construction work fluctuates with the economy. Um, the good thing about the electrical field, though, is um, there's always service work to be done. There's always repairs need to be done. But if you are on an install crew, um, then you know your work fluctuates based on the economy. So if the economy's down like it was in 2008, and nine, then you know work really came to a halt. So that can be a you know that can be definitely a con. How do I enter the electrical field? So it's not like you can just go to college and you know you graduate in four years and then you can enter the field. There are multiple different routes 
And at the end of the road, there's, uh, you know, that main certificate, that master electrician certificate that if you want the highest income that you'll need to earn. So like I said, there's three routes, okay? The first one is on the job training. On the job training it is what, what I did. Um, honestly, I would not recommend this route um, because there's no formal school setting, okay? So you're, um, you're just learning what you learn on the job and you, you're only learning the jobs that you're working on. So I was a commercial electrician. Um, I knew nothing about residential. Yes, wiring was the same, but running Romex and running pipe are two different ball games. So I really wasn't learning all the fields. Um, I only learned what was on those job sites that I was working on. Okay, so that is definitely a con. Your pay is going to be a little bit lower because you know you you're only you know you're going straight to work. You have no certificate, um, and your pay is based off your experience. Therefore. Um, it takes longer to get uh, pay increases and it takes longer to advance. So um, the good thing about it is there's no college uh, required and you know you're going straight to work so you're earning an income. Um, but on the job training is you know it might be good for career exportation. If you just think you want to enter the field and you're kind of unsure before you go to college and actually start forking out some money for this, um, you might want to want to start with on the job training. The next one um, is technical college. Um, there's some good things about technical college and some bad things about technical college. The good thing is you're going to earn a degree. After you earn that degree, you're going to have a higher income. You're, you know you're going to be able to negotiate those wages because you have some training in that field. Okay, you're going to be able to advance quicker. So um, when you uh, come ask for a raise or ask for a promotion you know, you have that, that degree to say, hey, I got the skills needed. The cons of it is it's hard to work, find work in the field while you're going to school. So usually a lot of those classes are during the day and electricians work hours usually 7 to 3.30 or, you know, 7.30 to 4, something like that. So it's hard to fit school into the schedule of an electrician. And then the other con is you're going to pay tuition, okay? So if you don't have the money on hand, then you're gonna to have to take out student loans. And then last one is apprenticeship. Um, apprenticeship is great because your school is paid for. Um, and while you are in school, you are applying what you learn on the job site because you're working and you're going to school. Um, most apprenticeships, you know, some are at night, some you take one, one day out of the week and you go to school. Every setup is different. Um, you know, they got union-based apprenticeships and they have open shop apprenticeships. The pay is going to be significantly higher. Um, they have pay scales that, that, you, uh, that you climb up as you complete years of apprenticeship. You earn a certificate or what they call a journeyman's card. Now the cons. There are some cons involved. It, it does take a little bit longer than a technical college. A technical college only takes about two years. Okay. A apprenticeship takes four to five years because you're not going to school full time. So you're going to school pretty much part time. So it takes a little bit longer. Um, and then sometimes the hours are long. So you might be in um, you might be in school f on the and in the evening. You might have worked all day and then have to go to school. Okay. So it can make for some long days um, the apprenticeship model. But at the end of the day, you know you're working towards that a master electrician. If that's something that you want to seek, um, a master electrician takes seven years. You must have seven years experience in the field. Um, so it doesn't matter which route you take, um, but I will recommend this. If you do on the job training, make sure that after seven years you go after that master electrician license because that can, can uh, serve as a as a certificate or degree as you could say. Now we're going to talk about the four fields in the electrical industry. The first one is residential. Okay, residential of course is houses. You'll be running Romex, you'll be installing light fixtures, installing you know simple devices like receptacles and range outlets, stuff like that. You'll be running service wire, installing panels and meters. So um, that is what the residential industry looks like. The residential industry it fluctuates with the economy very heavily, um, <clears throat> so you take note of that. The next one is the commercial industry. You're looking at schools, shopping centers, 
uh, apartment complex and stuff like that. You'll be running pipe, you'll be pulling wire, installing you know, uh, panels, switch gears, um, stuff like that. So the good thing about commercial industry is there's a wide variety of, of jobs. The bad thing about it is, is it also kind of fluctuates with the economy. Not as bad as residential, but it does fluctuate with the economy, so take note of that. Um, the industrial sector, you'll be uh, working in plants, factories, lawn work. So you'll be running heavy duty conduit, a lot of underground. You'll be installing like switch gears. You'll be working with motors, electrical motors. So there is a you know wide variety. Um, it is pretty much the commercial industry on steroids. So um, a little bit harder work sometimes. Also, you can include line work in that. So if you want to be a lineman, uh, you know you might want to work for a, you know, like a major power company. Um, so if you ever thought about going into line work, that would also be in the industrial. And then the last one is maintenance. And there's pretty much two sectors of the electrical maintenance. You know, you might have plant maintenance where you work at a manufacturing plant and you replace motors or, or fix any problems that arise for that plant. And then you also have, you know, the service industry. And that would be like your, your Mr. Sparky, I guess you could say, um, where you, you go out to, to residential dwellings or commercial places and you fix any, uh, any repairs. In the maintenance sector, you, there's two things that you must be good at. You must be good at, you know, problem solving, uh, critical thinking skills, troubleshooting, and then also uh, to be successful in the maintenance, you must have good customer service skills because at the end of the day, you're serving um, that customer and they want, uh, they not only do they want the problem fixed, but they want a nice, clean person coming in